It's the introduction to digital figure drawing class. We are now on lesson two. And before we begin with drawing proper, I want to run down some of the tools and resources that's going to be used in this class. First and foremost, the entirety of the class will be taking place in Photoshop CS6. Now, I'm using Photoshop CS6 Extended. If you don't have the extended version, that's fine. I'm really not going to be using any of those extended functionalities. If you don't have CS6, much of this can be accomplished in earlier versions, going as far back as possibly CS4 for the tools that I'm showing here. The new erodible tips that I'm using for the actual drawing part, I find to be really, really helpful for me because they feel very natural for drawing. Those are only available in CS6. If you're not using CS6, you have to use the previous tips, which still work. They're just not as realistic of a feel to them. Now, I'm also using my own workspace, my own custom digital drawing workspace that I have set up. I outline how to do this in the Fundamentals of Digital Drawing course. But just quickly to show you, I have the Layers panel with the standard channels and paths panels down here on sort of the lower third of the right-hand toolbar. I put the brush presets and the tool presets, both of them in the center here, and then the color panel up at the top. It's very important when setting this up that you load the pencil presets for the tool presets. You grab the brush tool, you go to the top left of the options bar, open that up, and then use the gear icon to load the pencils brushes. And those are what I use for 99% of the drawing in the class, unless I specify. Otherwise, I am using one of those brush presets. And next, I am also using a Wacom Digital Graphics Tablet. This is an essential tool for any type of drawing to be done in Photoshop because it First of all, it feels more natural. It feels like you're holding an actual drawing implement and you're not trying to use a mouse to sketch with. It feels like you're holding a pen or a pencil. But even more important than that, the tablet itself is pressure sensitive. So it has up to 1,024 different levels of pressure sensitivity built into it, as opposed to a mouse, which has two. Either the mouse button is up or it's down where the stylus for a graphics tablet can not only detect pressure, but also can detect tilt and rotation of the pen. So if you don't have one of these, they are available online for wacom.com. There's some very low end models that's run probably about a hundred dollars. That's the bamboo line that will work. I, I'm using the Intuos 4, a mid-level model that's pictured here, and I find it works spectacularly for the drawing that I do. And if you plan on doing an extensive amount of figure drawing or going further than at least this course with any of your efforts to draw people, do yourself a favor and go find yourself a drawing mannequin. These are available at most art and craft stores. They're not very expensive. You can probably pick one up for less than $10. They're also available online in several different styles. This is the standard mannequin here, just sort of baseline human, so to speak. And they're really good for helping to learn poses, the different ways the human body can be twisted and turned and the proportions are very good to help figure out with these. It's not perfect. It doesn't have all the joints that the human body does. And some of the joints are a little odd. The legs I find don't bend nearly in the directions I would expect them to because it's not a ball and joint hip like a human body's is. But overall, these have been used for generations and they are very, very helpful. If you do not have the ability to go and grab one of these, I have included several pictures of mine that you can use for references. These are included in the reference files or the reference images of the course files. And I've posed my mannequin in several different poses that you can grab and study. And it, it is part of the coursework. Now, along those lines in the reference images folder, there's also pictures of actual people from stock free images who graciously allows us to use their images for free. You can find their site at www.stockfreeimages.com and they've got a whole 
library of images that are free to use and download. You just sign up for it and you can download these for free. Also, Photolia has graciously donated some images for us to use as reference files as well. And these are available through their website, www.photolia.com. And this is a whole bank of royalty-free stock photos that are reasonably priced and really, really well done. I find most of the reference images that I use in my own personal work does come from Photolia.com. In the files that I'm providing here, they are watermarked and they're of good resolution, but they're not huge resolution. They're just to be used for the coursework and just as references. It's so that we can analyze them and help figure out how to draw the human body by looking at pictures of the human body. If you would like to get the non-watermarked versions of these, you can always go onto their website and you look it up according to the number that's in the file name of the images in the course files here. And then also in the course files, you will find the source Photoshop files for all the lessons as we go through. Any lesson that shows adding on to the figure that we work on, the source file will be available through the course files here. Along with this, I've provided the proportion guides that we will be reviewing extensively, and you can use those for free for your own personal references. I would encourage you just to keep them handy. If you work on figure drawing at any future time, you can pull those up and you can remember this course and use those to help you along. Okay, the only other thing that I want to mention is the style of recording that I like to use in these classes. I don't show every single pencil stroke because it would take far too long to show that. And I don't find that the speed painting effect is really all that instructive. Normally what I would do is, is give some instruction while I'm showing the beginning part of the drawing of the section that I'm working on, and then I will pause the recording, finish the drawing up, and then turn the recording back on so you can see how it looks when it's done. Sometimes it may seem like that's inconvenient, but you just got to trust me on this. These lessons would be hours long if I did not do that. So I hope that's not too much of a distraction for anybody because it works out really well for me and I do believe that the instruction is still maintained and that you will still benefit from seeing the actual end product and knowing the instruction that went into it. All right, so I think all of the housekeeping items are out of the way. We are done with this lesson two where we talk about the tools and the resources for the course and we are ready to move on to lesson three where we begin with something simple. We start drawing by using a reference.